Um, I'm here doing uh, a live stream of various features in Gorilla. Um, so let's start off with uh, cloning experiments. Um, uh, let's so, so here I'm in a, uh, one of our dummy student accounts and I'm going to create a project um, and show you how to clone things from the sample section. So um, let's say I've got a student project and I need to create a little study. Um, what am I going to need? I'm going to need a questionnaire. So it might be worth going and seeing if we have a useful questionnaire in our samples. Classic questionnaires. Well, I'm going to need a consent form, so I might have one of those, and I could call that consent. Um, and then now this will have cloned a copy of this into um, into my project folder. Uh, so here, here you can see it, and it's a. If we go and have a look, it says you're viewing version one, and this is a clone of this other thing, but this is your own version. You're not impacting the original. Um, so you can make changes from here. Um, if you wanted to make changes, you could press edit and use all of our normal questionnaire tools. So that's the first little bit I've done. So let's go through that process again. So I'm creating something. I'm creating a questionnaire. I'm going to clone it. OK. And I go and look. Now I could go and look in my library for things that people have sent me. Um, or I can go and look in other projects and clone them out of other projects or I can go to sample projects. And if um, you're a student and a teacher has set you an assignment, there's another section down here which would say um, <coughs> uh, assignments, and you'd be able to find them from there. But let me get my, in this case, I'll go back to classic questionnaires and get my generic demographics. Those are these. So here you go. Please answer the following questions about you. Are you female, male? How old are you? Yeah, that's good enough. And then the third thing I'm going to need for my lab is I'm going to need a task. Um, so let me, again, clone an existing task. So it, so you can also, so I'm just showing you here, you can clone questionnaires, tasks, and experiments. So you can clone a whole experiment um, into, into, your, um, into your project as well. Um, but let's, for now, let's just copy, uh, clone a task in. Uh, and I'm going to go for a classic task in, condition, in cognition, this relational reasoning task that I've got here. OK. And now once I've got these bits together and it, it comes with its spreadsheet, in fact, it comes, yeah, here it comes with one of the spreadsheets and it's a, um, the rational, rational reasoning task is all set to go. Those are the bits I need. I can now um, create an experiment out of them and we could use that. So that covers cloning. Um, we can have a look at what cloning an experiment does because that's slightly different. Um, so to clone an experiment, I can go here, and I know I've got some here. There's a, a demonstration of performance branching, and I can see here from this symbol that that's an experiment. Um, performance branching example, like this. Um, and that's going to clone that experiment here into my project. And it opens it immediately. So in this experiment, <coughs> first we have the Thatcher task. Uh, and if you get enough of them right, um, it says, uh, you go, congratulations. Um, and then they finish. But if they haven't got enough of them right, they try again and they do it again. And again, if they get it right, they go finish. And otherwise, you get better luck next time. So that's the simple experiment. But let's see what's happened over at the experiment level. Here, it hasn't copied in the specific assets. Okay, so I've copied the whole experiment and I can edit the experiment, but if I edit the experiment, I'm not changing any of these source files. But if, for instance, I wanted to go into here and I wanted to clone and edit, because I want to make changes to it, so I can go clone and edit, and I'm going to call that Thatcher um, my version so that we don't lose it. By default, you probably want all the nodes in this experiment tree to, to use your newly cloned task. So what I'm doing now is I'm cloning this task, and it's going to clone a copy of it into this project folder, and simultaneously update this experiment tree to refer to that new version. So update all the nodes in the experiment, clone and edit.
so now what's happened is I've got my performance branching experiment in here and Thatcher My Version is here. If I go and have a look at this, you'll see that this is looking at Thatcher My Version, looking at the right version. So hopefully that's clarified some things um, about how cloning works in Gorilla. Let's go back up to um, uh, the project level. Um, and in fact, the next thing I was going to do was um, demonstrate how the new recruitment targets work and the include node. So I'm going to go ahead and create an experiment here. I'm going to create an experiment. I'm going to create a new one. Uh, and this is going to be my relational reasoning experiment. OK. And uh, I need to edit this. I'm going to add a node. And I'm just going to put the task in. OK. And I'm going to put my relational reasoning task in here. Like that. So there's a very, very simple experiment. Now, include at the start. Um, let's have a look at what this uh, means. If enabled, include all participants at the start rather than at the finish node. If you're on a paper participant, including a participant immediately consumes a participant token. So by default, this is unchecked, which means a participant can start your experiment, take part in your experiment, and they don't consume a token until they reach the finish node. Now, it might be that um, instead you want to include all of your participants right from the beginning and you want them to consume the token here. We wouldn't recommend that. There's very few instances where that would be the right thing to do, but it, it could be the right thing to do. Um, actually, let's. Um, we need to make one little change to this. I want to put in uh, my consent form, so let me add a new node. I'm going to put in the questionnaire. OK. Let me put in the consent form here. So now we've got the consent and the relational reasoning task, and then our finish node. And we haven't checked this. So we're leaving this unchecked, and that means that um, a participant can start the experiment, um, and they don't consume the token until they reach this point. So halfway through, if they drop out, you could go, actually, I'm going to reject them, and then that token becomes available for somebody else. So let's add a node so that we can see where they've got to. I'm going to add a checkpoint here. OK. And this is uh, after consent. Ping this one into here, like that. So now um, they start, they do the consent form, and here when they meet this checkpoint, I'm going to get a notification of that on this participants page. And then they're going to do the relational reasoning task. And as soon as that's finished, they'll hit the finish node and they'll be shown as complete over here. Um, so let's go ahead and commit this experiment. Now, when I go to recruitment, I'm going to have to change two things. One, I want to change the recruitment policy to a simple link, use this policy. And two, at the moment, if we if, if we go to this, uh, this link here, we'll get a message saying you can't take part in this experiment because the recruitment is set to I don't want, I, I want no participants. So we're going to change <coughs> this now to four. So now it's saying I want to get four people to take part in my experiment. And at the moment, nobody's taken part. So let's see what happens um, when I go and take part in this experiment. So use a different browser. I've taken this link. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different browser to take part in this experiment uh, rather, than, rather than Firefox. Um, because I don't want to log myself out. And I want to show you what's happening on this screen as I take part. So um, here's Edge, and I'm going to put that link in here, and we'll see what happens. So here's the blank screen that participants get before they take part, and I press the Start button. Now, let's see what's happened over on this participants page. You can see that somebody is live. They haven't reached the consent checkpoint, but I am using a token at the moment. I'm holding one of the tokens. So this experiment has been I consent. Next. Now, so now I've moved on to the task. If I refresh this over here, you can see now that it's got the checkpoint after consent. So you can see where I've got to. Show the recruitment tab as well. And on the recruitment tab, you can see that one person is live and doing your experiment at the moment. 
Um, so I can go through and do some of these puzzles. And I've got some of them right. And when I press finish, there's thank you for taking part. And if I come back over to here, to the participants tab, um, this is now completed and the data is automatically included because the participant reached the finish node, they're automatically included. Um, whereas, and on the recruitment page, you can see that we're back to, we've got one out of four and nobody is live at the moment. So let's have a look at something else that you might see. Let's set the requirements as change requirements, limit by location, um, and I'm going to put in the country code for the Netherlands, which I believe is NL. Uh, yeah, I think that's the Netherlands. Yeah, the Netherlands here. So I'm going to set this to NL. Save. So now only people from the Netherlands can take part. So if I take this link again here, and I put in the link here, um, and I press start. You cannot participate in this experiment from your current location. So that's because I'm in uh, the United Kingdom at the moment. What's happening over here is that you can see that somebody has started, but this person might never be able to finish. And on and if I go back to recruitment, you can see that there's one person live. But I'm I'm in the UK. This is a an experiment for people in the Netherlands. I can't take part. I'm not going to go to the Netherlands to take part. So I'm just going to close my browser. So this person is never going to be able to complete, but they are marked as live. So let's see uh, another person take part. Ah, so this message is a useful one. It says you're already taking part in an experiment on this computer. So um, if, if we become aware that somebody is logged into a guerrilla experiment and then they try and start another ex guerrilla experiment simultaneously, we prevent them from doing that. Um, all they need to do if they get stuck on that screen is say, if you're sure you're finished with any existing experiments, which I have, I can't continue with the experiment that's based in the Netherlands, then I'd have to click here to log out and try again. That reminds me, to take part, I'm going to have to change these requirements. I'm going to get rid of that, um, save those, uh, and I don't need to limit by location anymore. So now there are no restrictions um, set anymore. So when I go back to here... To click log out, please. Uh, I have to click here to log out, which will take me back to the home screen, and then I can just try and take part in the experiment again. Here you go. So let's say I consent, uh, and I start taking part. Let's get to that point, move that away. So what's happening here? I've got another person there after the consent. Um, now it might be, in our particular design, we've only got one task here, the relational reasoning task, but it might be that there, were, there was more than one task and, a, and you had a checkpoint further down here called, um, at this point I'm willing to keep participants because there's enough data to make it worthwhile. So, so let me uh, close this one here, so that person's never going to complete, I think. Um, so this person here is actually holding a token. This one who can never complete is holding a token at the moment. So I'd want to reject them like that. Uh, and are you sure you want to reject this participant? Confirm. And that's a manual rejection. And when we go back to the recruitment tab, we'll see that um, their slot has become available again. Their token has become available again for somebody to use. Whereas here, this person, I can see that they're, they're not going to make any more progress. I've stopped making progress on that experiment, but maybe I want their data anyway. So then I could include them. This will include one extra participant in your experiment. Here you go. And when I go back to the recruitment tab, it means that I've now got two out of four completes. Um, so that's a little bit about the include node and uh, recruitment, uh, recruitment targets and the checkpoint node. So the final thing I want to talk to you about today is pivot tables. Um, 
So I've got some data to look at pivot tables and this is really getting at the question. Um, the Gorilla data comes to me in long format, one row per uh, trial. Um, and I'd like to have it for SPSS in short format, one row per participant. What's the most efficient way of doing that? Uh, so here is um, a relation, ex a reasoning experiment that I'd set up before, and it's got a um, demographics, a randomizer, and then uh, two two rows. Uh, so between subject experiment, with some people getting um, the ability to try again, and other people not getting the ability to try again on each trial. So let's just have a look at what that looks like, so that you understand. So this is the multi-try one. In the multi-try one. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times you get it uh, wrong, I'll eventually you'll get it right, but you might not get it right on your first try. So that's that one, return to configuration. The other um, option is that um, you have to get it right the first time. Um, and so it only accepts one response. So those are, those are the two um, the two tasks we've got. So let's go and have a look at this data. Uh, I can manage my experiment data. All my data is up to date, so I can download the data. Um, and I will save it uh, in my downloads. Here it is. And I've got these two, and this is a zip folder. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is unzip this. Um, and I will just put them on my desktop. Uh. Okay, here are the files. So what we've got is we've got a data file for each of the two task nodes. Here's the first one. BGZ0, and here's the second one, uh, GBU7. Um, just a note on this nomenclature here, we've given you as much information as we think you need in order to be able to identify um, which experiment you're looking at. So if I pull up um, the browser again, you can see that I'm in experiment 1923, and this is the task node BGZ0 in GBU7. So that's the information that you get in here. Uh, and in fact, you get one extra piece of information which we're on version two of this experiment, which is here, version two of the experiment. So hopefully um, that would help you know that when you get to version three of your experiment, this will say version three, so you're never going to get your data files in a muddle. Now, these two data files are for the same task, albeit with different um, manipulation set. So I'll be able to combine the data into a single file. So to do that, go into Excel and press Control All, and then press Control Copy, and then come down here to the end of file here and paste that data, and then get rid of this heading row. Delete. Now I've got all the data in one file, all the way down to here, and you've still got your end of file down there. So the next thing to do is to add a filter. So I select all the data and I can go to data filter. Make it a bit bigger so we can see everything. Um, so there's a filter and this would, would allow me, for instance, to look at a single participant. Um, so I could just look at what this participant has done. Uh, so they were in the multi-try. I could look at just how they respond to um, the response button image, which is the key trial we're looking at. And I can look at these are these are their reaction times there, but that's just looking at each participant individually, and that's that's not the question we're struggling with here. What we want to do is can we look at all of the data for all of the participants together? So if I go back here, I can clear this. So what we want to do is insert a pivot table from all of this data. So you go to insert pivot table and press OK, and this puts it onto a new sheet. Now. 
essentially for the pivot table you're going to say what information you want in the rows and what information you want in the columns and what you want to show in the, va in the values and if there are any overall filters you want to apply. So let's have a look at what we might want. We're going to want the pro participant private ID initially. Here you go. Um, and we're also going to want to know, let's say, think um, how many trials each of them have done um, based on the randomizer. And we've got these two randomizers here. Uh, BX, randomizer BXPO. So if I drag that key column, To here you can see the single try and multi try and the last bit of information I want is <coughs> um, the how many uh, attempts they had let's say so that's here um, and I want the count I don't want the sum because as you can see here, this person, this was try number one and try number two. So the count will give me two for this person, whereas the sum would give me the sum of those two, which would give me three. So this shows me quite nicely that all the people in the single try um, did seven trials each, and the people with the multi try, they had more tries each um, on their uh, on each on each trial. So that's what I'm expecting to see. Now I can move and copy that, create a copy, move to end, here you go. Um, let's have a look at some other data. Maybe what we want to look at is, rather than the count of the number of attempts, we want to know how many they got correct. Um, but we want to know how many they got correct, and in fact, rather than the count of correct, here we want the sum of correct. So here, in multi-try, they all get it right in eventually, whereas in single try, sometimes, it's only a few of them who got every single right, every single one right, um, and other people uh, uh, got some of them wrong. Um, but that's sort of an unfair comparison because, of course, everybody in multi try got it right eventually. So, how would we make more sense of that? Um, attempt one. Is we need to bring in the attempt one. So, you can go back to your filter here. You've got here's your column attempt. You want to filter this for only the ones where it's attempt one did you get it correct so let's have a look I'm going to drag that up into this filter here and we only want attempt one um, and now you can see that um, the the sum of all the corrects here the people in the multi-try condition didn't do as well as the people in the single try condition possibly because they weren't trying as hard on their first try since there was no penalty for not getting it right the first time <coughs> um, so here we've got whether they got it right or not but we could also look at reaction times so we can move or copy oh I seem to have pulled up something the wrong thing here uh, we will copy, create a copy, move to end. So now instead of the sum of correct, what I want to see is the reaction time for those ones. So here's the reaction time. Um, so instead of the sum of correct, I want uh, their reaction time. And then maybe instead of the count of the reaction time, actually what I want is the average reaction time. And now you can see that this might be data in a format that you'd want to um, put into SPSS. Now the one other thing that you can end up doing um, is sometimes you want your demographic information next to your participant number. Um, so, but I don't have any demographic information in this file. Um, I've got that in my other file, uh, which is this one, um, about uh, the questionnaire. So let me open this to start with, and then I'm going to move and copy this, move and copy, create a copy, and move it into the other file that I'm working on. Which one is it? Uh, 
move into here, pivots. So, where's, here's my questionnaire information. Uh, move a copy, create a copy, put that into pivots. Okay, so now I've got my questionnaire data in here. So let's create a pivot table out of this. And I'm going to want, again, the participant private ID. I want the same ID that I've got in here, which is the private ID. Um, and what I want to know is how many are male and how many are female, uh, which I should have. So I've got this key called uh, sex. And, and their response, uh, which is the response here. Um, so that I can, that's not particularly useful. Let's move that to there. So we have mostly female in this room, one person says they don't know, and some male. Um, <clears throat> now it's, um, it's not straightforward to combine uh, this data with this data, rename, um, so this is pivot for uh, reaction time, and this is the pivot for Sex. Um, but what we can do is we 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 can merge them uh, with a little bit of manual uh, manual work. So first of all, I want to take a copy of this, and I'm going to paste the values over here, and then go if this is equal to a one, then female. Otherwise. Uh, Male, and in fact, this one shouldn't be male. This should be. I don't know. I'm just going to do that one manually. But you could create a, a formula, which you could copy down, and it would do all three of those. And so now I've got information. Um, I've got these these two columns, which are the useful columns that I'm going to need um, elsewhere. So when I come over into this this information here, what I want to do is a lookup based on the participant number of what their gender is. So here after the participant ID, So this is all the way to the end of the file. I'm going to talk you through this in a second. So what this does is for every participant ID, and I know it's repeating it because this is the same participant ID all the way down to here, it's looking up and returning what, what sex they have based on this number. So it's saying index, so it's easy to read it from the match, saying match this number in this list here um, and tell me what position it is in the list and it returns a number like this person is in position position 1 uh, 128981 one, one, yeah, that's in position 1 and return to me 
based on this list the value entered at position 1. So here it it's basically putting up um, the sex for each of my participants. Now when I go over to here I'm going to need to update this pivot table um, so that I have access to that data. So I've now got sex and I can add this here into participant ID. Now that's not hugely useful because it's now given me two rows. So there are a couple of ways out of this. Um, you want to show in tabular form and you want to, again on report line, repeat all items and then you want to get rid of these totals. Uh, remove Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Put that back in here, and I want that to be the average. What's happened? That's response, not reaction time. Ah. There you go. Um, we want to get rid of these subtotals. There you go. So, um, we probably want to get rid of that one, remove the grand total. Now this is data you could directly copy into SPSS. So I take a copy of that, paste that over here, paste values. You've got your participant ID, the gender, the reaction time for those in multi-try, and the reaction time for those in single try. Actually SPSS might not like it, it might want to see the randomizer down here, mightn't it? Um, and then in fact, uh, let's put that up at the top and get rid of these subtotals here. That's even better for um, SPSS, isn't it? Like that. All of these participants were in the multi-try conditioning and this was their average response time. And all of these were in the single trial condition and this was their response time. So that's the um, end of our uh, live stream today uh, for Gorilla. Um, we'll be doing these every week at uh, three o'clock UK time. Um, email us questions to cover on the live stream. Uh, be on Twitter and tweet us questions during the live, live stream. We'll, we'll try and uh, respond to them. Ask us questions in the comments of YouTube and we'll try and address those as well. Um, but hopefully this gives another venue uh, for people to get support during the week where it needs a little bit more of a demonstration. Anyway, thank you for your attention. Um, see you next week. Bye.